I'm a bat biologist here at Bucknell University. I've been studying white nose syndrome now for about three and a half years. White nose syndrome is an emerging infectious disease that's killing hundreds of thousands, if not millions, of bats, uh, primarily in the northeast United States, but now it's working its way steadily across the country. Early on in the, in the discovery of white nose syndrome and in, and in trying to study it, we were hampered by the fact that we really didn't know the causative agent of this disease. But with the research that we describe in this paper, we've now conclusively been able to demonstrate that in fact this fungus, Geomyces destructans, is the causative agent of white nose syndrome. The lead authors on this study are scientists at the National Wildlife Health Center and folks that I had begun to do some collaborations with. I was brought in as a bat hibernation physiologist. and one of the few people in the country that had experienced hibernating bats in captivity. And in my laboratory, we had been studying how the immune system works in hibernating bats. And so David Bleher came to me, we met at a conference, and we started to talk about how would you do an experiment like this to demonstrate the critical steps necessary to show that a, a, a particular organism is a disease-causing agent. So we talked about the study design. We hashed it out, out on paper, we talked to other folks about it. I described to him our setup for housing bats in captivity, and we helped him get set up um, with the capacity to run these experiments. What we found is that, in fact, the fungus, the presence of the fungus on a bat is sufficient to cause this syndrome. So initially, a number of people had thought that, myself included, that fungal infections don't kill mammals, that there must be a secondary infection, something else is going on. David's research group and others from National Wildlife Health Center had demonstrated that this fungus was something they could culture from sick animals. We then took this fungus and um, took cultures of the fungus and put it back onto bats, and we're able to generate the same lesions that we see in naturally infected animals with white nose syndrome. So we're able to see, in fact, to demonstrate that this fungus is sufficient to cause this syndrome. We also housed very healthy animals from far outside the white nose zone with sick animals from the state of New York and demonstrated bat to bat transmission in that context. Our ability to move forward with white nose syndrome research has really been hindered by not definitively knowing if the fungus is really all that you need to generate this disease or if other things were happening. Now that we've been able to demonstrate this, we can really focus on the mechanisms. The next big questions have to do with how do you go from having a fungal infection in your skin, in this case primarily in the wing membranes and the face membranes and in the ears, not just simply around the nose as the name might imply, how do you go from a fungal infection in your skin to death several months? Later, what is it about the bat's hibernation behavior and physiology that's changed? What is it about this fungal infection that's interfering with their physiological mechanisms to cause this mass mortality that we see in some species, 95, 99% mortality? The next steps in this research are to figure out how this fungus and the bats interact with environmental conditions to, to be able to predict which other species are going to get this syndrome, to be able to come up with some mitigation strategies. For example, we know that the fungus grows best at a particular temperature range. We know that bats hibernate in certain preferred um, conditions, and so can we figure out which of those um, conditions are going to be most conducive to, to growth and, and focus our mitigation strategies in those particular places. But the big question, right, is whether or not we can prevent extinction in some of these species. And, and I think that it's, um, we're, we're trying really hard to do that. It's going to be a great big challenge. And I think that by studying the basic biology of what's happening here, we'll have some aha moments and then are going to allow us to save some of the species, to hopefully save some of those species that are f on the western edge of this syndrome that are not yet affected. For the regions of the country that are, have already been significantly hit, it will be much more difficult to do anything. But I think none of us have given up hope. We continue to work really hard to come up with strategies, you know, to try to take our basic science and apply that to things that management agencies, wildlife biologists, state and federal can use to help manage this, this syndrome.